All right, what's up everybody? Ballet Brand here. Uh, today's video is going to be a little bit different than the normal live stream on Sunday uh, at 2 p.m. The laptop was running a little bit slow and I'm having to do it right now like this uh, post live stream so I can figure out everything and get back to you guys when the live stream is not laggy and choppy. So without further ado, I want to talk a little bit uh, what's what's happened since the last time I live streamed which was a week ago so we had the big payday in hex which was big we all know that the big payday was big what happened since the big payday was on a live stream with me and Yash Deep he asked me uh, you know Bran what do you think the staking percentage will be leading into big payday because at that time it was maybe 12%, I think. So my guess was maybe anywhere, I believe, it was from like 15 to 19% was my guess. And lo and behold, what we saw the uh, prior couple of days leading into the big payday was the actual origin address itself had staked, leading the actual staking percentage to go all the way up to almost 100%, it was like 99 point something percent. And there was a lot of people that saw that leading into the big payday, and a lot of people, they they may have gotten disheartened that the actual number that was in their go.hex.com slash stake uh, tab for the big payday, some people were a little bit disappointed that that number went down, but what they were doing was actually bad investing and they were counting their eggs or they were counting their chickens I mean before they had hatched so the actual big payday itself that number was always variable and it was always determined by the amount of uh, wallets out of 100% how, how much was actually staked so when we had 12% staking total the, the big payday was like two and a half, maybe even three times the actual principal on your stake. But long story short, we, we saw that go down. So the reason I start off with this is because I want to explain to people that may have been, uh, you know, may have been mad or may have been sad to see that number go down. I don't think you should feel that way at all. And one thing I want to recommend to everyone that's a staker or that's not a staker is when you, if you invest in something like Hex and you make your own stakes, it's what I do, and I've heard other people recommend this as well, is that you don't put everything on one stake. So say if you had $10,000 and you can stake up to Cuatro Cinco, you know, 5,555 days, it might not be the brightest idea to do all of that in one go because then you're going to be waiting for a long time before you can realize some profit. So for myself, I have laddered the stakes out uh, variously from 5,555 days all the way to you know a year, less than a year, things like that. And as far as the big payday goes, I want to talk a little bit more about that. So. Richard did a live stream, I believe one day before the actual big payday, and it was when we had seen the actual staking percentage uh, go up to you know nearly 90%. And one thing that Richard mentioned as an analogy, and I'm actually gonna play this analogy on uh, in, in just maybe a minute or two, but one thing Richard mentioned was you have an analogy which was De Beers diamonds to Hex. And so a lot of people that maybe didn't understand all the game theory, they may have been mad that they couldn't have their two and a half, three X, whatever. But at the end of the day, at a minimum, you still got, I think, at least 30 or 40% at a minimum, uh, even if you just staked for that one day. So whether you were staked or not, uh, for that one day, that's still a good percentage to have and other people as well that had 10 year stakes, uh, 15 year stakes, uh, some of those stakes, they, they doubled. 
So you've got 100% uh, on top of your principal. But long story short, the analogy Richard uses that I'll play in just a minute is the De Beers Diamonds Company. They owned the actual uh, diamond mining plantations for, they owned, I think it was like 80 or 90%. No, is that like 85% of the actual total supply? And they owned that for like 100 years. So what that does is it creates it creates a giant bag that they're holding on to and they could just flood the actual supply in the market with a whole bunch of diamonds say if they were to do that today they just dumped their whole bag and they flooded the market well what that would do is it would lower the value of the diamonds that were on the market currently and so when Richard uses the analogy that hex and the rarity of hex is similar to that type of uh, event and idea it really rung true for me and I hope it'll ring true for you as well because when you have someone that is soaking up or something the origin address that soaks up a good amount of the supply well we don't know what the origin address is going to do but we've seen that it hasn't dumped on us currently and what it's done previously before the actual big payday was that it was staking for 10 years out. I think it had some Quattro Cinco stakes as well. And what that does is it shows you that the OA's intentions, in my opinion, they've never had mal intentions. They've always seemed to have the strongest hands and they've always seemed to play with, with other people as well. So the people that were just staking for November 19th, just so they could have that big payday. Uh, a lot of people were coming in last minute just to stake for that big payday so then they could dump more on the market. And so when I saw the staking percentage jump up to 90 plus percent, it was like 99%, 98, that actually gave me a sigh of relief because I realized if the OA and the OA wallets did not do that, there would be a lot more sell pressure. And if you just if you think about it logically, uh, all of the people that were mad and and furious and fuming, um, in either Richard's live stream or just on social media in general, well, what were their intentions if they're mad that they didn't get some huge bonus? Uh, in my opinion, their intentions were more short-sighted, and that's kind of a projection of trying to dump on the market's head when they get mad at such a thing. And if we all know what HEX is, it's a certificate of deposit. It's a high interest certificate of deposit, but it's also a variable APY, uh, depending on how many people actually stake. If 100% of people stake, then you'll get a 3.69, and if less than 100% of people stake, you'll get a higher percentage than that. So you still got to understand why did you get to the why did you get into this product in the first place did you buy it just to trade it for a short term or did you buy it and stake it uh, and hold it for the long term and for what it was designed to do so without further ado I want to share my screen and I want to I have right now uh, Richard Hart's most recent live stream where he talks a little bit about the De Beers diamonds and he talks a little bit about that analogy. So let me try and share the screen. The reason this isn't live is because the computer, like I said, was a little bit slower and I don't want the actual streaming to be really laggy uh, for the time being. So in the future, I think I'm gonna have to upgrade hardware, but at least for right now, I hope this works for everyone and thanks for everyone with your patience. So let's share the screen. Okay. And you gotta gotta click the share audio as well. All right, we're gonna full screen. Oh, one second here. Let's let me remove myself from the. Okay. We can't get shaken out. I really am. Like if someone doesn't believe long term, like if. If guys just want to buy and, and hold for a day, 
and then dump the price, well, let those guys have less coins. The less, so <clears throat> an interesting analogy is what are, what are the most expensive things in the world that you can have to show how rich you are? Okay, well, let's think. Gold, this is white gold. Diamonds, GH Keller SI2 Clarity. They're kind of gray, but whatever. There's a lot of them. Uh, well, okay. This is just compressed carbon. Why is it so expensive? Because there's a company called De Beers. And De Beers has gone around buying all of the mines and sucking up the supply into their own coffers and not letting anyone get those diamonds. And then what happens to the price of diamonds? What well, keeps going up? Why? Because they're scarce and rare. Why? Because the De Beers company owned 85% of all the production as a monopoly for over 100 years. So if you like diamonds, you're going to have to pay out the ass to get them. Till this day, they still have, I think, 65% or some, they still have some, you can go on Wikipedia, um, just Wikipedia De Beers, D-E-B-E-E-R-S. And it's a very interesting model for how to create the most valuable stuff in the world. Like, you, you can't get more baller stuff to stick on your jewelry to show off how rich you are, except diamonds. That's what you add to it to make it more baller. And, how to, and so it's like, <clears throat> the, the price cares about supply and demand. If people are going to sell... You want to make sure they have the fewest coins possible because that's what the price cares about. The price cares a lot about that. So yeah, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the economics of Hex where impatient noobs keep getting cycled through and it benefits the people that have longer investment horizons, that get more bonus shares, that don't have to live staring at a chart. Huh? But, but you know what? In chat, I meet people that that is what they want. There are degenerates in the Hex Crypto Trading chat, which is t.me forward slash Hex Trading. There's degenerates in there who have to have the adrenaline rush of insane ups and downs. Well. Okay, so for everyone that saw that, I hope that went through smooth. We're going to stop sharing the screen for just a second. So, yeah, that was Richard talking about... Um, how, how markets work generally when you've got supply and demand if there is a huge diamond supply and the demand is high then if you've got a whole bunch of supply the value per diamond is not going to be as expensive as if you have the current diamond market where it's, it's still similar there's a certain supply and because it is limited it makes the actual demand for each individual diamond more valuable. And when, for someone like myself that's been in, uh, in on Hex since day one, when I look at the, the overall goal of the product and my investing goal, it's to have a longer time uh, horizon when it comes to the investment. So sure, I've got some stakes that are shorter term and that I started it almost a year ago that end say in a couple of months or you know sometime in 21 uh, 2021 sure I have that but I also have actual stakes with significant significant principle that go much farther than just a year you know and the idea of hex is when you have something that is finite in supply like Richard's mentioned when you have holders of hex and stakers of hex, when you have them locking up the supply and not having it on the market for that time that the hex are staked, then what you have is for the current hex that are on the market, you've got a higher value. And what that does, Richard's mentioned it before in previous videos, but it's pretty much a uh, a lending of value virtually. So maybe three weeks ago, when we had one of these really big wallets and big whales, 
when we had them take seven and a half million dollars and lock it up for 5,555 days, what that did is it reduced the actual supply of hex on the market. It was almost a billion hex, but it reduced that actual supply on the market and it made the the supply that were available in liquid, it makes those more valuable. And what it does is it sacrifices uh, that 15 year stake. They're delaying their gratification for 15 years. And what we're gonna see is in the future, uh, not only are they locking up the supply currently, but they're also making hex more valuable for the future because they're locking in their hex at a good share rate. And in 15 years when that wallet sells, the actual share rate then will have been a lot higher. And so what it's doing is it's making that hex uh, just more valuable as the stake matures. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's, let's, go into, let's go into some stats real quick. We're gonna go to hex.vision and let's share the screen. Let's go to hex.vision. So this is something that Firebuns developed. And we can see that there's been a lot of changes since the actual big payday itself. So if we scroll down up on the big payday, I believe it was like 98% staked, but we can see that it's dropped all the way down to 17% roughly staked. And what that does is when I mentioned earlier that if you have 100% of the supply, everyone is gonna get 3.69% APY at a max. Well, when you only have 17%, the actual yield and the actual APY that you're getting is going to be higher. So we can see that was some of the actual AA adoption amplifier data. And then when we scroll down more, we can see what the actual percentile is of people that are staked. So 25%, is 257 days, 50% is 537 days, and 75% percent percentile is 1,889 days. And this this right here, guys, this chart and this information right here on Hex.Vision, in my opinion, is one of the most important things that you can look at when it comes to a staking value. So when you see down here, it's saying per four weeks, when you look at say 2024 or any any year after 2020 when we look at just how far out in the future the hex stakes goes we can see the actual supply that's going to be realized at that time that's locked and in my opinion when i've mentioned earlier that the oa since they staked they're taking a bonus of that BP, uh, bpd from the people that thought they were gonna get a higher bonus. Well, we haven't seen the actual origin address sell anything on the market ever. Sure, it's made stakes, but in my opinion, the OA has, has uh, done what's good for the actual long-term horizon of the project. There was so much, there was so much FUD uh, in the beginning of Hex that the OA is gonna dump on your head or the OA is gonna sell the second that the big payday happens and we've never seen any of that. Uh, if anything, it, it's done stuff to, to benefit us. Okay, so that's the hex dot vision. I would look at that when you're going to place a stake and try and have a month that there's not a whole bunch of uh, hex stakes ending. When people were, were just staking for the big payday just for the bare minimum, we could see that there was a whole bunch of individual addresses that tallied up for that day, and we can see that there was a dump that day. And that's what we're gonna look at right now. We're gonna look at what the big payday did, why there was a dump, how far it dumped down to, and we're gonna see the current price of it now. So let's go ahead and share the screen. So for everyone that doesn't know, there's two different types of, two different versions of Uniswap. There was Uniswap version one, and we can see it records all the way back to December 15th. And there's Uniswap version two, which I believe starts in like May. Like it, it starts later in the year. And the Uniswap version one is more of a historical chart. 
whereas version 2 is good for you know current liquidity and volume and stuff like that but the version 1 is always going to be historic so that's what we're looking at right now we can see that from the all-time low to the all-time high we're not the all-time high but from the all-time low to where we're at currently we can see how far the actual chart has gone uh, some some of the people on Twitter that were fudding hex and that were you know spreading fake news about hex they were looking at save uniswap version 2 and they weren't giving you the full picture in the bigger picture so this is just on a daily but if you if you go down to say just a weekly and I know I have some of these these uh, measured parts of the actual chart already but we can just see that hex was just having a healthy correction in my opinion uh, any time in crypto you've got a big news event uh, generally a lot of people they'll speculate on that event and of course we had the same thing happen with hex uh, some people call it like a buy the rumor sell the news but if you're someone like myself or if you even just got back in a couple of months ago you can see that say in September in September October range after the big payday we dropped down to around those price ranges just a couple of months ago and for any for anyone that has any uh, doubts or uncertainty just look at the actual history of the chart and look at what it's done after every single dip so we dipped down all the way below all the way below 20% of a penny uh, at the absolute bottom it was about 19 point something percent of a penny and what we've seen already is a a very drastic and a very volatile recovery in a good way um, for everyone that bought the dip congratulations because in my opinion I don't see us dipping down much much below where we already have dipped uh, when we actually zoom out when we zoom out and make the candles a little bit bigger we can see that we're up about 120 percent from the all-time low to its all-time high which happened a few hours a few hours later uh, within that dip so for everyone that bought the dip good job so that's the uh, that's the uniswap version version one like I said I recommend that people look at it so you have a broader time horizon of what hex has done uh, because one thing Richard mentioned actually in a tweet recently we're gonna remove that uh, one thing Richard mentioned in a tweet recently was he was showing the historic chart of hex and he was showing what happened after uh, after hex has had dips previously uh, because when you have any market generally it's got a market cycle you know you've got uh, ups and you've got downs and we saw a big run up to a penny and a half uh, leading into big payday and then we saw a healthy correction as well that's totally fine you can't just have something that just goes up forever uh, so in my opinion uh, a lot of hexagons they were speculating that there could be a dip and what that dip allows people to do is it allows people that were either impatient they were scared they were short-term minded and had a short time horizon it allows them to sell and get out but when all of them are selling at the same time it's just making the actual uh, the actual value that they have less to dump on your heads so one thing Richard has talked about is if you're gonna have some brutal dump he would rather have it dump just brutally and the people that are making that wick down he would rather have them get out for less you know would you want someone to have more value to dump on your head to make the price go lower or would you rather have someone that had less value from a BPD uh, to dump on your head and and have someone actually buy up that dip so we saw a lot of people buying up the dip myself included caught a little bit of it didn't get the absolute bottom but got a little bit and staked it out you know I'm happy happy with where it's at so the other thing I'm gonna show you guys and talk about for just a handful more minutes is the actual staking itself uh, when you stake you've got a share rate 
and that actual share rate, it never goes down. So I'm going to show you what I mean real quick. Let's go to share screen. Okay. Okay, so we're going to share screen. We're going to go to go.hex.com slash stake. I'm going to do that real quick right here. Okay, so this is just the go.hex.com, but we're actually going to go to right here, go.hex.com slash stake. And right here is the actual share price. So before the big payday, this was at about 10,000, uh, roughly, give or take. It was about, at about 10,000 hex per trillion shares and per T share. We can now see that it's at 16,083 hex. And what that does is anyone that got in before big payday they have what are called genesis shares and that is something that is going to be that term is going to be used throughout hex's lifetime uh, for the next 15 years because that's as long as you can stake but this actual number right here the way that it ramps up and the way that it goes up it mimics compounding interest so the person that has the highest uh, return on investment on their stake, that person is setting a new share price uh, for the rest of the stakers. And what it shows is if you say if you had 150 million hex, for example, and you set the new, the new share price, uh, anyone and yourself included, you couldn't stake that amount again and get more shares than you had before. And so the way that the actual share price uh, mimics compounding interest it, it does so through exponentially ramping up. We can saw we can see that we had a 44% uh, roughly, a give or take uh, increase, and and now we can see as stakes get ended, that number is just going to go higher and higher. So what else do we got, guys? I mean, we've got a decent amount of stuff that I've covered today. We've got some of the the concerns and the, and the fear that people had, and we see that the actual project itself, it's recovered quite well. When we stop sharing screen and we go back over to, when we go back over to the chart, we can see that at about 20% of a penny was where, in my opinion, we may have bottomed. Um, so when we, when we scroll up, the actual absolute bottom that we've had recently was on November 20th, you know, zero zero UTC when those people could actually sell their big payday gains. And I think that's a really good, really good thing that what we saw was when the actual price started getting bought back up. We can see that right here, this, this big red candle right here was the one that wicked all the way down to below 20% of a penny. And for anyone that did buy that, and if they sold theoretically the recent wick, well then you're already up 120 percent and when you have something like a cryptocurrency it's going to be very volatile but throughout hex's history we're going to see not necessarily more of a stabilization but we're going to see that for the people that maybe bought a month ago two months ago that may be in the red uh, on paper we're going to see those people they're going to have their losses made up for the next price pump uh, so what happens in Hex's history, no one knows what's going to happen in the future, but, but all we can do and all we can really look at is what's happened in its past. And we've seen dips like this, you know, 80% dips, 85% dips. We've seen those dips get bought up, and they're bought up by, by people that were waiting on the sidelines. They wanted to get a really good deal, in a really good amount of hex for their Ethereum. And those people were rewarded for being patient. And the people that were impatient and that dumped when they were at a loss or they invested for three or four days and they thought they were gonna get a whole bunch of supply that they could dump on the market, those people were also surprised as well. And so I think what we're doing in hex is really good. We seem to be having as far as the community members, um, the people that, that didn't show interest, 
those people in those wallets, they seem to be getting shaken out. It seems that the people and stakers that are in Hex right now have more of a longer term vision and they see what it's actually designed for and what it's designed to do. So it's great to see that we've got a lot of the community that are in a similar boat. We've got our eyes set towards the future and the actual product that Hex is and that Hex has is not changing at all. We've seen that the actual fear, uncertainty and doubt that was around Big Payday and that was around the launch phase ending, we can see that a lot of that is going down to going down to the wayside because Hex is still working, still has 100% uptime. It, it's amazing. So that's the little recent price action chart that we have. Um, and in my opinion, I think we may have bottomed. So we're just gonna get out of there. And one last thing, because this is a little bit longer of a video for non live stream. Just want to say thank you for everyone that joined the 24 hour live stream. Uh, Hexologist and RG3, uh, you guys did an amazing job hosting that. And I was really proud and happy to be a part of that, even, even if it was for a short while. Um, I didn't expect the actual uh, connection on that live stream to be kind of choppy. So like I said, that's why this video is not a live stream. It's a pre-recorded video that I did after Hexologist, but we're going to get that all figured out for the future so we can, so we can do more live streams and so we can talk more uh, about Hex and answer some of your guys' questions. So on the 24-hour live stream, we had so many hexagons that I've never seen before. And that's a really motivating thing and it's a very uplifting thing as well because when you've got people that are willing to show their face on camera and people that are willing to share their hex stories and why they got into hex and, and what it's done for them i think that really not only solidifies the community even more but it just goes to show you that all of us are you know we've got similar stories and we've got like joe hexotic he's a uh, He's mentioned a pretty interesting story uh, of his own where, you know, he was an alcoholic and all these things and he died one night and came back to life and, and now he's now he's in Hex and now he's got stakes that are 11, 12, 13, 14 years out. Uh, when you've got stories like that of people that used to be traders or people that used to get into projects that weren't complete, they were just projects, uh, when you see people come for full circle and actually uh, end up in a product that in my opinion is better than all of the other ones out there. I think that's really cool from a community standpoint. We can see people that have gone full circle. They've gone to the complete degenerate route and then some of those people have come back because they've realized that the uh, degeneracy was, wasn't getting them, uh, getting them anywhere when it came to those, those projects. So. Everyone, uh, yeah, the 24-hour stream was great. We had everyone wearing a top hat. Almost every, every single person on the stream was wearing a top hat. I had my own, had some banners as well, had some, some merch here, some merch here. And right now we're wearing the, uh, the, the hoodie to, uh, to represent some more Hex merch. So uh, for anyone out there, yeah, the actual, the actual Hex merchant, uh, the official Hex merchant uh, isn't isn't up and running yet it's not actually turned on but some people I guess they've been uh, they've been printing their own from what I've been told is they've been printing their own shirts and things like that uh, so if that's something you want to do that's not my business I can't recommend or condone it but that is something people have been doing is uh, is making their own hex t-shirts and and wearing it as well because because what it does is not only does it market the actual logo, but when someone asks you about it, you can, you can tell them that it's a certificate of deposit that's also cryptocurrency that's uh, similar to buying Bitcoin at a dollar. So that's still my b belief and, and vision for Hex is it's not going anywhere. 
we had the launch phase ending, which was amazing because the actual adoption amplifier minted about 1.3 billion hex every single day. And what a lot of that hex did is, you know, what it does is some of that hex was used as cell pressure. And now that we have hex that's at a uh, predicted inflation rate, we, we know that we're done with the hyperinflation stage. So if we went up 268x, which we did, from the all-time low to the all-time high in hex, uh, if we know that we had that, then we also know that since that inflation phase is done, hex could in the future pump significantly higher, maybe even to that 10,000x in two and a half years and now that the actual adoption amplifier is over. So hex, compared to any other project, and Hex is a completed product. And I think a lot of people are going to continue seeing Hex standing on top of the mountain while some of these other DeFi projects keep failing. I mean, I saw one recently. <laughs> They're always named after foods, too. You know, yam coin or pickle this or that. And they claim to be decentralized finance. And what we find out is there always seems to be some magical exploit that happens that some coder or some sort of person found a bug in the ex uh, in the actual contract and exploited it well in hex we don't have any of that we've never had any hacks nothing like that when it came to hex and the reason why is because the actual consensus code that makes hex what it is as a smart contract well that's not something that can be manipulated it's completely locked and not even Richard Hart could make changes to that consensus code if he wanted to. So Hex really is similar to Bitcoin in those ways that it is, I shouldn't even say to Bitcoin, but if you say compare like Hex to Uniswap, uh, they're both immutable, that they actually can't be turned off. And uh, it's great. It's absolutely great. Um, yeah, I'm going to end it here. Thank you for everyone that's, participated in my live streams and watching my channel appreciate every one of you and also once again thank you for the patience the little different style video that we have here and yeah i plan on plan on speeding up the computer or getting a new a new laptop and and uh, getting some more live streams out on the way so i want to be able to interact with all of you guys which is why i like to go on twitter and, and telegram a lot and, and chat with the community so uh, before we know it we'll be doing the same thing but uh, in a live stream so thanks everyone and I'll see you on next time